Last weekend, we went to a swap meet and then we went to a U pull. Let's take a look at how we prepared and what we got. So I looked up how much it was going to cost us to get in yep. and the parking fees and the admission and roughly how many booths. What else did we look at? We also looked at what the going price is for most of the parts we were looking for. We wrote up a list of stuff that we were going to need sooner than later. And as so this way we could start processing our way through our jobs as we get stuff done. And the cost of gas to get up there and back. And yep. we had a couple and, meals out. Yep, and a motel room. And we went and we pre-booked the room the night before. And we ended up saving $30 because of that. Yep, and we also made plans in case the swap meet was a bust. Yeah. Because you never know who's well, going to show up. Well, that's it. And But that one is supposed to be one of the largest ones in the state. So. Mm -hmm. so what I'm showing you here is pictures of some of the rooms. This is probably one of the largest swap meets I've ever been to that was indoors. It's supposed to be the state's largest, and I don't have a hard time believing that. The first room we walked into was huge. It was about the size of a football field. And I went, holy crap, this is big. And then we started walking and went, hey, look, there's another room. So we started walking through that room. And then we went, hit the end of that room, there was another room, and another room, and then a stadium. And it took us about five hours to walk the whole thing once. So this is the hole, and we're going to break it down for you. Okay, so I see that you got a carburetor. Yes, um, this is a used 750. I picked it up for $100. It's in really good condition. It's dual pumper. It's vacuum secondary because of the 355 that we're putting in the Javelin and a little better sized for that motor than the 600 that I had. How would I know that this was a good carburetor to pick up? You kind of don't. If you look at it, you can generally tell. I always naturally assume that whenever you pick one of these up, you're going to go through it, clean it, rebuild it. Um, you could just throw it on the car and see how it is, but I usually at least crack the bowls and just make sure there's no gunk or anything else from sitting. So I'll be showing that on one of the Pro Mom videos. Yep. So what would I want to check on a carburetor if I was picking one up? Um, basically, just all you're looking to do is you're looking to see if it looks like all the parts are there. Um, the other thing is, is is this dirt? Is it really dirty? Is it overly clean? Like you know they and then cleaned it all up. So what's this box that says Holly? Okay, this is a carburetor, um, basically a rebuild kit. It's got some basic parts in it. So what comes in a carburetor rebuild kit? Okay, so this one has a bunch of different size jets in it. It has different side air or squirters. It's got different power valves. The other thing is, is it's got a stack of the, the bowl gaskets and stuff. These are actually really expensive. This was this kit, if it's brand new, is usually um, close to $100. It's 
between 80 and 100 dollars up to about 200 depending on where you get it um those gaskets are usually a dollar or two a piece and are they reusable kind of um they're supposed to be reusable sometimes they stick and tear so you want to have a stack of them plus you have a bunch of different size jets and stuff like i said but i picked this one up for 25 bucks that was an awesome deal they had another one that was just jets that for another 25 that i probably should have gotten because jets get really expensive <laughs> and if you're going to be playing with actual holly carburetors and stuff this is a real good thing to get it to get so you can kind of start tuning and so tell me about these door handles okay so one of the things is is you have to be 100 percent sure of the things you get in this case i actually screwed up i saw them and knew them, knew that they were for an amc these are for an earlier model than the javelin um, mine actually ha are a little bit longer and have the key lock in it this is for an older style where the key lock was actually in the door not in the handle but we could use it if we had to replace it yeah you could use parts for it you could use it for something else like i said i picked these up for five dollars a piece that's an actually really good deal and they're in pretty decent shape the, the chrome's not all torn up on them so and you could always resell them if you wanted to as yeah well. yeah I, i'd probably sooner hang on to them just for you know, because they are a flush mount. There's all different kinds of stuff you could use them for. Could you use them on a, a camper, box. couldn't you? What's that? Don't campers use those? Yeah, they use something similar. But like I said, if you're making something, sometimes that nice flushness would work really well. And there's all different kinds of stuff you could use it for. What else did you get? So for the 51, I've got uh, a set of crank handles. I don't know if these will actually work. I picked these up and a set of door door openers. Um, yes, they are not. They're going on the 51. They're not actually for the 51. They're in decent shape and they're probably better than the ones that I have. Um, one of the things you can do is you can always drill them and put a set screw into them if you need, depending on the system that you're using. You're also, I also got one of these. Um, it's just a general old fashioned pole handle. Um, like I said, I might not use this. I might use it for five bucks. Yeah. You know, and that's it. Some of the stuff you pick up for five bucks, like these. <laughs> um, these are actually off the 51. These are part of the door mechanism to pop the door out when you pull the handle. These things are really expensive if you can find them. And they're probably rare because it's such an old car. Yeah, um, you can order reproductions. It's also part of the catch mechanism. To order repops of these is generally really expensive. Like I said, I picked up those for five bucks. I also picked up these go on, on the inside of the door handles and the door the door mechanisms go over them. And so the door mechanism doesn't rub on the cloth. Um, I picked these up for I think three or four bucks a piece. I got six of them. Whether I use them or not, it's a totally different story, but I can always go through and resell them or I can use them. What have we got here? So one of the really good things when you go to really big car shows um, is a lot of times you can get shop supplies. You can get off brands. You can get them really cheap, cheaper than what you're going to get them for locally. You can adding supplies to what you keep in the shop, depending on how much of this stuff you're going to be doing. You know, you might pay out a little more in the short term, but over a long period of time, you're going to save per piece. So these are sandpaper for a long board. These are sandpaper uh, or nine by 11 sheets. These are, these are carbide bits. Um, these are real good and they're extra long shanks. So if you're doing head porting or you're doing some work that's farther down into any piece, these work really well. Um, I got a various different sizes of different cuts, cylinder head porting and later videos, which we'll use. This is actually a really cool thing. And for, I think we picked it up for, I think it was $15. It was. Um, it's a test light, but it actually tells you the voltage, which is- Digitally. Yeah, digitally, which is really, actually a really nice system and it's pretty bright. Um, the other thing I picked up um, were these, is they're little lights. They're made for the license plate, but if you're creative, you can find all different other kinds of places to put them that they're out of the way. And you know, they're small and they're really, really bright. And those cost me eight bucks. So, you and know, you and they're LED. And you can see these things in person, person as well yeah. versus buying online yeah. and it's kind of blind. <laughs> yep, and you, you could actually see how bright it is. Plus, you could pick them up, you could hold them, you could see how they are. You know, are they really cheap? Are they chintzy? Is this all plastic? In this case, it's all metal. So, you know, they're 
And if you looked at this stuff used on something like Facebook, you still have to drive. So yeah. that goes into your cost as well. Yeah, well, here's the other it. problem. You go buy it all, you go buy lights off of Facebook, you don't know how many hours are on them. These are brand new out of the package. Great. They could fail in five minutes or they could last me, you know, five years. Yeah. You, you never, never know. know. So tell me about your woolly stuff there. Okay. So this is a polishing kit. And the other nice thing about going to the shows and stuff is sometimes you find off-brand stuff like this that work better than anything you can find anywhere else. You could go buy, you know, a couple of dozen different things. This one actually polishes chrome and stuff. It'll polish the rust off of them. Um, for 20 bucks, I got a, a bottle of the polish. I also got three of the polishing wheels. The polishing wheels can sometimes get expensive. I saw that in the show that they were pretty expensive by themselves. Selfs, yeah. So like 20 bucks for this, um, you can, this will work on chrome, it'll work on aluminum. Um, we're also going to try to see if this stuff in particular will work on uh, the plastic headlights and stuff because we have a couple of plastic headlights so I want to polish out and I want to show that. So that's why, you know, even if it's on your own personal car, it's something that instead of paying someone else to go do or go spend a whole bunch of money, there's ways you could do it cheap with stuff you have at the house. So what have you got here? The rear end gears. For a nine inch Ford, these will also be going in the Javelin. Um, the Pro I Mom! I haven't figured out what size uh, gears I'm going to run in the 51 yet, so that's the reason I didn't pick a, up a set. I know, rough, I know what size tires I'm going to run, I know what gearing I have in the transmission, so I was able to figure out roughly within a range of what gear set I want. How do you know these are genuine parts that they are the same size as what they say up there? You kind of don't without looking at them. Generally people, if they're selling new gears and stuff, and this is a brand new set, um, if they're selling them, they know what they're for. They're not like, oh, I, I have no clue. Here, give me $200. <laughs> you know, um, these are out of a nine inch. These are actually an off brand, but they're still cut by Richmond. Um, Richmond make really good gears. And they're here, so. here in the States. They grind them, they cut them. Um, Richmond gears are really generally kind of expensive, but they're a really good quality. Um, like I said, I picked these up for $175. <laughs> That's probably, I, I definitely saved a couple of bucks on it, and they're a good quality gear, they're brand new. Um, the biggest problem with buying used sets is if you don't get them installed perfectly the same way, <laughs> um, they wear out quicker. Okay, and I can tell you that that was kind of heavy because I carried it. Yeah. So tell me about this heavy object. Okay, this is a Detroit locker. It's a 31 spline, um, so it's set up for a tr so it's set up for truck axles. Um, NASCAR recently started to change the rules on the rears. Um, they ran nine inch nine inch Ford rears for years. They're, it's an aftermarket one, but they used all nine inch parts. Um, because of that, NASCAR has started to sell off their stock of these lockers. These lockers are really expensive. I picked this one up for 275. It's probably doesn't even have that many miles on it. Um, these things are really expensive. These they're gone through generally before they sell them because they keep them on, in stock on the shelf because they're constantly building rears for the new race car for a race. Usually, most of the chassis only get used for <laughs> two rate one or two races for that year. And it might get used, you know, for a couple of years, depending on how the rules change and stuff. So they've always got stacks of these. They've got stacks of the actual rear ends, the whole nine yards, which you can pick up, depending on where you're at, relatively inexpensive, especially if you're going to cut one down, because they run a, a full floater, so it's got a piece. <laughs> and so if the axle snaps on a normal one, the axle will come out. Well, these these actually have a piece that they rock, that the bearings ride on. So if you snap an axle, it can't go anywhere. You literally have to snap that hole, snap it off. So is this for the Pro Mom? Yes. Um, it's a Detroit locker, so it's kind of like um, a limited slip. It's slightly different the way it applies power. Um, but <laughs> so this way, when someone decides they're going to spin up the tire at a stoplight or something, it's not a one-wheeled wonder. Or if they launch the car, it doesn't pick up, and then one wheel starts spinning faster than the other. It'll lock the rear end up, so it'll, as long as there's, you know. This sounds like we're going to have a good time with this javelin. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> so after the swap meet, we went to the pick and pull.
I am filming your redneck engineering. Too bad somebody already took the hood emblem. That's what I said. That is a pretty nifty trick. Ain't them. Meow. So, one of the things we needed was for the Javelin, we needed seats. So we went looking. My wife wanted something out of an import. We ended up finding these really, really, really nice IKEA, these are comfortable, Jaguar seats. They're out of an X type. Uh, they're leather. They're in actually really good condition. The driver's side is a little bit flecked out, a little bit of conditioning, and that'll get fixed. They're power adjustable, they're heated seats, the whole nine yards, and I paid less than $100 for them. If I were to sell these, I could probably sell them for a couple of hundred dollars. So when we went to the Upola, how did you know the seats would necessarily fit? Um, I had a rough idea of how high the original seats were, how tall my seats were that I had in it. So these actually are a little bit taller in the base. So since I know that I'm going to have to do some floor pan work to begin with, to lower them down to make them fit was fine. Um, but they're out of a car. The cars, the seats tend not to be really, really tall. It's not like it's out of a truck or out of a van where it's got the really big platforms on it. So that's why I knew that I'd be able to get these to work. The other thing was, is I wanted to get a full size spare for my wife's car. I was able to find this tire. Didn't even have to pull it out. Just had a look in the back of something and I found a, br a nice rim in an okay tire. Which is fine for a spare. Which is fine for a spare. I wanted to get some LS parts. So I happened to find two me mechanical throttle bodies, which I was looking for. All I had was uh, the electronic ones, which I don't like. I found um, a computer out of a 5.3 that was mechanical throttle body and flex fuel, which I grabbed. Might not be able to find an OS for it, but I have the computer. I have the software that's on it. I would also... Um, after that deer jumped out in front of me, I still needed a grill. I was able to find one of those. And um, we have the emblem. And I have the emblem. And then as we're walking around, I happened to notice that one of the cars up, up on rims had a set of eyebox springs on them. Now, it was a Passat, so it doesn't fit anything that I have, but I know what these things go for. Um, a set of these usually goes for two to three hundred dollars. And you know, I'd walk out of there with them for less than forty dollars. So even if I sell them for a hundred or I sell them for eighty, I'll still put money in my pocket. It only took me a couple of minutes to pull them and I'm already there. There from the swap meet, we were in that town, didn't cost any extra fuel. Yes, we had an overnight, but we knew that after being at that swap meet all day, we all the way back home. So for two bucks a person, it was definitely a deal to get in there and start pulling parts. I knew that there was going to be something that I could find that I could use and I was still looking for parts. So I ended up saving money in the long run. So if someone was going to a U-Pull lot, other than knowing which vehicles would have an LS motor if you were looking for something like that, what else could you do really to prepare to get the most stuff and the best deals, whether you're going to resell it or use it? If you start looking at parts, especially on Marketplace and stuff, you'll see that certain parts come up on a regular basis and people are always selling them. They don't stay up for real long. You kind of get a price, you know, an idea of a price that you're that people are willing to pay for that part. So like say a truck intake manifold, there's guys that'll sell them for a hundred bucks. Well, if I walk out of it, the u pull, I'm not paying a hundred bucks for it. So you're making a lot of profit. You, yeah, you know, even if it's 50 bucks, how long does it take you to pull it? The injectors, you're not gonna pay a lot for injectors. If they're out of a flex fuel, they'll flow a lot of fuel. Um, yes, you need to tune them if the car is not set up for it, but they produce, they, they'll supply a lot of fuel because um, flex fuel, when you run like E85, 
it takes 30% more fuel than it does gasoline. So it's able to supply 30% more fuel than another 5.3 injector. So this way, if you're producing or if you're sucking in more air, you can offset that, that fuel. So if somebody was trying to make up money and they had some storage space to buy other parts, going into something like a U-Pull and buying a bunch of seats and selling them on Facebook or something might help pay for the parts they really yeah, you have to lay out a bit of money, but you can make extra money. So therefore, you know, if you're if you have a longer distance and you're going there and you have an extra day or extra time, there's certain parts that you can pick up that eventually you can you can turn around and sell, and at least make a couple of bucks on, which starts paying for itself. Yes, you had to lay out that initial money. What it is is, it's making your your parts that you're using actually cheaper in the long run. Now, why don't you get out in the garage and do something?